Welcome back from the weekend, CA football fans, as we continue our 12 teams in 12 days. He's Tim McDonald, and I'm Bobby Broyles. Did you stay out of trouble this weekend, Tim? <laughs> yeah, uh, for the most part, I did. Thanks, Dad. Well, that's good to hear. We're <laughs> sticking with a familiar theme already as another new head coach breaks into our series today. Of course, talking about the Jamie Dukes and their new head coach, Everett Withers. Mm -hmm. For the first time since 1999, 1990. 19 98. We're seeing, you know, a new look JMU team. Mickey Matthews is uh, not the head coach there anymore. Everett Withers comes in, uh, a really good hire from a standpoint of coming from great programs. He was at Ohio State where he was a co-defensive coordinator. Um, you know, he was part of that team at Ohio State, the, the two years where they went 24-0. and It's just a, a hire that you look at and you say, not only great for the league, but just great for JMU. Like I said, you always look at JMU in this conference and you say, the talent's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Can you translate that to wins? I think JMU coming out this season, you know, you start with defense. So many returners back. You look at Titus Hill. You look at other players like Gage Steele. I think uh, Dean Marlowe even mm -hmm. got three of their four uh, top returning tacklers return. I think, like I said, at the end of the day, JMU, that stadium and the talent is going to be there. It's a question of Everett Withers. Can he bring that talent and translate it over? I think a lot of people wanted to do it right away. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that happens. But again, I think JMU defensively, he at least inherits a great squad on that side. Interesting note about Everett Withers. He, uh, he was the interim head coach in North Carolina. First game he coached was JMU. It, was against right. JMU, right. a win over years JMU. Ago. Here's Coach Withers on the defense he inherits this season. Well, I think the front seven is is definitely a strength of our football team, uh, and I and I, you know I think about uh, the Brandon Lees and the Alex Mosleys and guys like that up front that have really, throughout our off season, throughout our spring, and even into our summer, have, have shown growth. Uh, Sage Harrells, the the Gage Steels, uh, those guys have been been truly uh, guys that have stepped up their game. We think this off season and, and spring and throughout the summer. Uh, so we expect to be really good. Uh, I, I expect to be really good up front. I, I really do. I think we have some improvement to do in the secondary. Uh, I think there's a, an area that we want to we want to improve in. We want to be more aggressive on defense. So we have to be good in the secondary. And, and to be honest with you, I'm gonna have a lot of influence in that because uh, I want to I want to be really good back there. I think I think the the blueprint of your defense uh, has to be aggressive defense and has to be aggressive coverage in the secondary. We have to be able to do that. Offensively, Tim, the Dukes will have a new signal caller, at least we think, in Georgia Tech transfer, Vad Lee, who is expected to take over the reins on offense. You think if, if they're going to put him on the poster for the, uh, the season leading up and he, and he started the spring game, you think he's going to be the starter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very, very interesting uh, topic. I'm excited to see this JMU offense just because of that fact. You know, he's a Georgia Tech transfer, and we all know Georgia Tech runs a triple option, mm -hmm. an athletic quarterback. Now, I'm not going to go out and start, you know, calling him Rodney Landers or, or Justin mm -hmm. Riscotti all, all again. I think Vad Lee, though, is going to be the quarterback. All indications are pointing to that. Offensively, James Madison, you know, we know last year they had a 1,000-yard rusher. They had Michael Birdsong. All of a sudden, Birdsong's gone. He went mm -hmm. to another school, transferred. Daquan Scott, 1,000-yard rusher, graduated. Mm -hmm. It's a question of getting guys fill him up. I think Vad Lee is going to be the quarterback. Does he have enough weapons? Abdullah is a running back last year who had three touchdowns. Rashad Davis is another guy with 124 yards. After that, though, no one managed to rush over 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Running game, I don't know. I think it's just a question of if you have Vad Lee, uh, can you put enough weapons around him? Guys like Dean Chatham are uh, going to have to step up. But I think offensively, James Madison, like we said, the skills is going to be there. I think it's just a question. Maybe offensive line, are they going to have enough beef? Again, Withers on the expectations for the Dukes offense in 2014. Well, uh, you know, we've got some, uh, some holes to replace uh, in the offensive line, but, you know, I'm really encouraged by what I saw this spring in our offensive line. So we, we want to be able to run the football, and, and that's where it starts. I, I believe it starts through the middle of your, your offense and defense, your, your lines. And uh, offensively, you know, with a guy like Matt Williams, hopefully returning uh, from, from his surgeries in the LC, he missed his spring practice, but his leadership uh, gives us something special, I think, up front. Uh, Austin Lane. Uh, we get Austin Lane back, who had a knee injury last year. Uh, uh, Ray Fucci is another guy that we expect some big things of. Uh, we've got some, uh, you know, a couple guys that transferred in uh, that we're expecting big things from. Uh, so we hope that our offensive line will become one of the strengths of our football team. If that's the case, I think that will bode well for us offensively. Uh, you know, Bad Lee is, uh, you know, obviously a guy that everybody wants to talk about, uh, but but Bad won't be successful if we're not good up front. Tim, the Dukes have missed the playoffs in three straight seasons, something that the program isn't used to. As you look at JMU's schedule, 
Let's look at the early conference slate with two games appearing on Comcast Sportsnet. The Dukes are at Villanova and home versus Delaware to wrap up September. Yeah, you look at the first two games in general just before those, at mm -hmm. Maryland and at Lehigh. I think you know the Maryland game is just going to be a good test just to see what, what everything looks like for mm -hmm. JMU on both sides of the ball. At Lehigh, that's no slash of a game either. That's mm -hmm. going to be a tough one. A Patriot League team, still a very good Lehigh squad. Then you have uh, St. Francis at home, manageable. I still think it's really tough. You look at the end of September, they're going to play at Nova, then versus Delaware, like you said. At Nova is going to be extremely difficult. Home versus Delaware the next week. Delaware, that game last year versus Jamie was a great game as well. Mm -hmm. I think even more importantly, you look at uh, those two games at the end of September, both Villanova and Delaware have bye weeks before, so it's mm -hmm. almost like the scheduling gods, you know, giving, not giving Jamie a break there. I think overall, you look at Jamie and you just think to yourself, you know, Look where they're picked in the preseason and look at their schedule. Can you call JMU a dark horse? I don't know. You know, it's, it sounds, you know, not to give them a entitlement or anything like mm -hmm. that, but, you know, it's just not something that they're used to, and I think uh, the title will dictate that, especially at the end of the year. William & Mary at the end of the year at Stony Brook at Richmond. You mentioned that game versus Richmond is going to be on national TV. Mm -hmm. Depending on how JMU attacks the front of their schedule, especially those two early conference games, that will determine the rest of the season. And I think it's also quick to mention last year's preseason team that was picked eight was the main black bear. So to call, them a da to call them a dark horse could, <laughs> is a possibility. Yeah, that's a good point. The Dukes kick off their season on the road as they head to College Park to take on the Maryland Terrapins. On Saturday, August the 30th, that game can be seen live on the Big Ten Network. Bobby, we also caught up with a couple of JMU players at Media Day. We can see their interviews on CA Football's Every Day is Saturday blog. CA Football's 12 Teams in 12 Days rolls on tomorrow as we take a look at last year's conference champs, the Maine oh, Black Bears. Bears. For Tim McDonald, I'm Bobby Broyles. We'll see you tomorrow here on CA.TV.